All right, folks, welcome back uh, for what I hope to be another educational video. Uh, we finally did it, uh, the minimum best hand challenge. Uh, if you don't know what that is, uh, I encourage you to check out uh, my last video about this where I explain, you know, what the challenge is, uh, what the parameters are, you know, what in the run, what makes it challenging and how we might accomplish that with uh, the particular seed that we picked. Uh, here you're looking at, okay, the end screen here, we've got, uh, this is 4,546. This is the best hand that we played throughout the entire run. Uh, so at no point did we score more than 4,500 points. This is the minimum possible best hand that you can get. Uh, in the final round here, we need 50,000 points. Um, and with the combination of burglar, blueprint, and then also the voucher, the grabber voucher, we're able to get 11 hands. And so uh, 11 hands times exactly this 4,546 gives you just barely over this 50,000. And so that is the challenge. Uh, one part of the challenge is, well, how do we get this number, this 4546? You know, there's a lot of different ways to score points, a lot of different ways to modify your score. Getting this exact number, maybe there's different ways that we can make that happen. Uh, second, okay, once I'm able to achieve this, then I need to play this exact same hand 11 times. Um, and you know that presents its own challenges um, and so if you just want to see the run successfully completed uh, that's a video that I just put out uh, not that long ago uh, but the plan for this video is to do uh, the commentary the walkthrough try to explain you know as we're going through uh, different precise maneuvering that make this possible All right, uh, previously uh, I put out a couple of videos related to using this seed to get the most money that we can. Uh, we were able to achieve uh, like 1600. Uh, my best is 1740 uh, dollars with this seed. And so we wanted to uh, follow a similar path with the same seed uh, in order to meet this new different challenge and then uh, somehow use that money spending it on shop rerolls and uh, celestial packs to get whatever it is that we need in order to make this score happen and so uh, i did previously put out a video uh, this is only the second half of this run and so uh sorry we'll go You'll see we're starting in anti four. I put out a previous video uh, doing the first three antis, showing uh, sort of the s same path as the money making run, uh, minor modifications here and there in order to fit uh, the parameters of this new challenge. Uh, one of the things being, for example, uh, if I want my best hand to be this forty five hundred. Uh, I'm not able to score anything higher than that throughout the run. So when we were going for the most money, we were using flush houses as our scoring hand, you know, getting uh, tens of thousands of points at a time. Okay, that's off the table. We can't do that anymore. And so we needed to modify the path a little bit to accommodate for that. Um, and then also include in the path you know, maybe picking up some additional planet cards. All right, uh, I will say at the start here, I want to give a shout out to Discord user The Real Evab. Uh, they're a real one. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they did for me the calculations required to make this run happen. Um, like I said, this 4546 is a very specif specific amount of points that we need to get. And there are different ways to do that, some easier than others. Um, and so what we were able to calculate, what we were able to figure out is, if I play a single three as a high card, and I play it 
uh, exactly 11 times with 11 Pluto cards, uh, you know, powering up that high card, and then also a Constellation Joker on uh, times 1.6. Then that will be the points that we need. And so the challenge in this run is going to be, well, how do I get enough uh, planet cards? How do I get enough Pluto cards? 11 is uh, not a huge number, but it's not a small number either. Okay, so that's one challenge. Um, the Constellation Joker, we do need to eventually get to it. Uh, it does take us a while. So on this particular seed that we're using, uh, it takes us about 80, 85 shop rerolls before the constellation shows up, uh, which means, okay, to get 80 rerolls, that's a lot of money. And if you try to do that all in one shop, uh, the cost of rerolling goes up way too high, way too fast. And so we're going to take that 80 rerolls and kind of spread it out throughout the run so that we can find the Constellation Joker when we need to. All right, if I go back uh, a little bit here, there we go. Uh, in the deck preview, uh, also this is new technology here. Uh, there's been a patch between the last video and this one. Um, and the patch allows us to view our deck now. And, you know, before we could always view uh, the whole deck, whatever cards are in the deck. Uh, but now, when we go to the deck preview, these grayed out cards, these are the ones that we've already drawn. These are in our hand. And then the ones that aren't grayed out, these are the ones that are actually left in our draw pile. Um, so this is a new quality of life uh upgrade here uh, it's amazing um, so here you can see we have uh, the eights that have the gold seal and so when we we're doing the money making run we would use uh, if I have a pair of eights with a gold seal then when I play those they return to my hand I can play the same pair of eights over and over again uh, and then that way we can make you know 11 pairs over the course of one round and get lots of value out of our eight ball. So we want to do something similar with our high card, but we need it to be a three. So in order to get a three, we can take one of these eights and we can use a strength tarot card and turn it into a nine. And then we can turn that into a 10 and then we can keep going uh, all the way up through, uh, we get an ace, turns into a two, turns into a three, loops back around. And so, uh, again, it's not an impossible task, but it is going to require a lot of tarot cards, a lot of uh, strength cards in particular. All right, so keep that in mind uh, as we're going through this. Uh, we're going to start off here by making some glass cards. Uh, this is not for scoring purposes. Uh, this is so that we can thin our deck. Uh, this first glass card is, is going to break and then over the course of the run we're going to hope that more of these glass cards are breaking because in the end once we get to our uh, gold seal three we want it in our starting hand we want to be able to play that three uh, if we don't have it in our starting hand then we're sunk that's it we lose so we need to be able to find it we need uh, our deck to be thin at the end now, uh, here right away we get, uh, very conveniently, we get our first strength card and we can go ahead and take these eights and then turn them into nines. All right, after playing a couple more pairs of eights, uh, there we go, we get the Fool card. Uh, so it turns out, uh, you know, just based on the way that the tarot cards are dealt out, uh, there's a couple Fools, uh, not back to back, but they are relatively close together. And so uh, here I'm going to, instead of using this Justice card to make more uh, glass cards, I'm going to sell it. And then that way I can, or what I need to do is I need to, 
Use the Fool first to get Strength. Then Justice the 10 so that I can get the Glass card value and then also still have the Strength left over. Since we played the Strength second, now in a couple hands here when we get another Fool, we'll be able to make another Strength card. And there we go, you know, in one round we got that's three strength already. So, you know, hopefully it's not gonna be too hard for us to get uh, these tens all the way back around to threes. And then at the end of the round, we get uh, a Pluto card. So we don't have to get all of our Pluto cards from uh, booster packs, from celestial packs. We can get some of them from these uh, priestess tarot cards. Um, or, you know, even later on, we can use uh, a Fool to make extra Plutos that way. Um, and like I said, we're picking up where we left off from a previous recording, a previous video. And so in this Anti-4, we've already consumed four Pluto cards. We need this one and then seven more after this. All right, Dev, Local Thunk, if you're watching, I've got a puzzle for you. Uh, you probably know the answer, and I have a guess what the answer is, uh, but for those who aren't in the know, uh, here's what happens. If I use this Wheel of Fortune right now, it will give me a holographic card, and it will always be this rightmost card. Um, and so right now, if I use this Wheel of Fortune, I'll get a holographic uh, juggler here. If I shuffle things around and put a different card on the right side here, you will actually get a holographic of a different card, whatever card is furthest to the right. If I put the egg on the right, which is already holographic, then it'll just be the previous card. Uh, it'll be the fourth card instead, you know, whichever furthest to the right that isn't already holographic. Okay, that's normal. That's not weird at all. But, okay, if I take this Hone Voucher, Hone Voucher is supposed to increase, uh, you know, the chances of you getting foil and holographic and polychrome jokers. They occur twice as often. So if I buy this voucher first and then do the Wheel of Fortune. I do not get a holographic. Instead, I get a foil. And it's not on the last card, but it's on the second card instead. Well, that's good. So, you know, part of this calculation, like I said, we need the three as our high card. We need the 11 Pluto cards. We also need uh, foil. Uh, any foil joker will work. So here we're gonna go ahead and get the foil blueprint uh, that'll be just perfect for us. Okay, and now what you're seeing here, like I said, we do eventually need to find our constellation. So we're going to burn through uh, a bunch of these shop re-rolls. And notice here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this celestial pack. But before I pick up the celestial pack, uh, I purchased this Venus. And then I re-rolled two more times instead of, you know, just opening the Celestial Pack right when we enter the shop. And so what's going to happen is, let's say I didn't take the Celestial Pack. Let's say I just hit the re-roll one more time uh, or two more times. I forgot what it is. If I just re-roll, the next planet card that shows up is another different Jupiter card. And if I go, uh, you know, a couple more times down the line, re-rolling, there would be a Venus card, except if I'm holding the Venus card in hand, then the Venus card will not spawn into the shop. Um, and so, you know, if I purchase this Jupiter, then the Jupiter that's next won't show up either. So what I'm gonna do now, when I open the Celestial Pack, because I have Venus in hand, it won't show up in the Celestial Pack. Because I have Jupiter in the shop, it won't show up in the Celestial Pack, which allows me to skip 
several planet cards which would show up and then now they're just they don't instead um, and so you know this sort of technology here in the big money run uh, I use this with tarot cards, sort of holding on to certain tarot cards to prevent it from spawning in doubles um, and then helping us sort of skip through, dig deeper into the queue of tarot cards. So in order to find all of the necessary Pluto cards for this run, we're going to use the same sort of strategy here. And so what I did was I picked up the Venus card and I re-rolled until we have the Jupiter card here so that none of these will spawn when I open the Celestial pack. When I open the Celestial pack, uh, I don't find the Pluto that I want, but I do uh, have this Earth card, which is going to help us with our scoring. Uh, last thing before we leave the shop, we are going to take every opportunity, every Arcana pack. This one happens to have a, a strength card here. And so, you know, I thought about we could possibly, as we're going through the run, uh, manipulate the shuffler in some way. We could play the previous round slightly differently and try to force it so that I want to upgrade certain cards with the strength. So I could make it so that this offering here, you know, through manipulating the shuffler, gives me the cards that I want to apply the strength to. That's an option. Uh, it ended up being too tedious. And so, you know, as I was going through this, this min best run, uh, what I said before, I want to stick to the path that I already kind of know. I want to do this. It doesn't have to be perfectly optimal. I'm not trying to get uh, super high amounts of money. Uh, I need a medium amount of money. And so some minor inefficiencies are okay. Um, for example, in the previous round, we didn't play uh, all 11 pairs of eights. We only played 10 pairs of eights. There was one round where I played four twos. And that's fine, you know, minor inefficiencies like that. Uh, another option here is if I don't take this Arcana pack, then when we go into the next round and we start generating tarot cards with this eight ball, uh, it's possible to generate uh, this strength card. And so we can get the strength card later on. But uh, it turns out that this is fine. Um, in the end, we want to be playing threes. And so if I turn these twos into threes, that's kind of good enough, helpful enough, there will be plenty of opportunity to pick up strength later. Okay, I will say uh, I did try. I did try to do the commentary at the same time that I was doing the run. Uh, it was just way too hard. Uh, I couldn't, you know. I would do get deep into talking about a certain point and then trying to go back and then figure out where I was and what I was doing uh, was too hard. Um, so, you know, here there may be some bits where there's not necessarily a whole lot to say, and we'll just sort of like zip through it. Um, but here, okay, this is the next interesting thing that happens. Um, previously, uh, we were okay with flush houses when we were going for big money. We wanted to get flush houses as our scoring hands. Uh, here, we want to try to avoid that. And so, because this jack used to be this eight, you know, it was created using death tarot cards. Uh, they're the same suit. So, I have two jacks of hearts that are uh, gold seal, and I have three eights, uh, or I think I've got four eights, or something like that. Uh, anyway, they're all hearts, which means if I am 
you know, at some point needing to make points with my jacks and my eights, then, you know, one way to do that very consistently is to do a full house, except I can't do a full house, it becomes a flush house. And so what I'm gonna do here is actually, I'm gonna take uh, three of these and then turn them into clubs instead. And so what that does is now my jacks and my eights are now different suits. They were the same suit, which is usually what you want, but because I wanna avoid flush houses, uh, I change them to different suits. Um, and now we should be safe playing them as full houses. Let's see if I can do this. Sorry. Oh, I went way too far. There we go, yeah. Uh, you know, we're still kind of on the same round here. I wanna skip ahead to the shop. Alrighty, so now that we're in the shop, uh, we do want to pick up this Arcana pack, pick up this Celestial pack looking for, you know, could be useful tarot cards, could be useful planet cards, uh, reminding you we need these 11 Pluto cards. Um, and so we're sort of juggling at the same time uh, tarot cards and then also separately these planet cards. And so what we're gonna do here uh, we're gonna use about 15 rerolls. Uh, we're gonna do six first, so that we can pick up this death card, uh, then this priestess, and then one more reroll. Okay, there's a temperance. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, the tarot cards, they are in this order. Death followed by high priestess, followed by temperance, um, and then also there's a hermit. And so if I open this Arcana pack before re-rolling, it gives me Death and Priestess and Temperance, and I want all of those. But I can only, you know, when you open the Arcana pack, you're only allowed to pick one. And so by re-rolling into the shop, I can pick up the cards individually, and I can have all of them. And then, you know, when there's some tarot cards that I don't mind skipping, then I'm going to open the Arcana pack and then it'll skip over all that garbage. And so we do want to dig, we do want to reroll until we pick up all three of these before opening the Arcana pack. And then you'll see now in the Arcana pack, uh, Moon, Devil, Magician, I have no problem skipping those. Uh, I do want this Hermit. And so there is at least the one good one that I want. All right, now that I've got this High Priestess, okay, now it's time to st focus on these uh, Planet cards. So I'm gonna roll first. And this is so that uh, here, when I hit this Mars card, now when I use the Priestess, there would be another Mars card that gets skipped by it. And I get Jupiter and Earth instead. And now when I open the Celestial pack, there would be, uh, I think it's another Jupiter card, but now because I have uh, Mars, Jupiter, Earth, these three will not spawn in my Celestial pack and I will be forced to get something else. I'll be forced to get this Pluto is the thing that I actually want. And then now we can go ahead and just get rid of these because now we're switching back into the tarot phase.
Okay, there we go. Another strength card, turning our jacks into queens. Uh, I think we're halfway there. Okay, and then... Then we get the hangman, and normally, you know, you want to use this to thin out your deck. You get anything that's not uh, an 8 or a 3 or these gold seal cards, we just want to get rid of them. Um, but... Uh, I happen to know that there's a Fool coming up, and so if I sell this instead, I can use the Fool to make another Strength card. You know, pretty standard stuff. Alright, until you get to here. Uh, this is... Okay, you might question this, uh, but trust me, this is what needs to happen. Uh, we get this Hermit card, and like I said, uh, there's a Fool coming up. And if I'm going for money, uh, I can play Hermit and then use the Fool to get another Hermit, and that's a ton of money, except what I'm going to do instead is the opposite. I'm going to sell this Hermit. Uh, that feels bad, but uh, we need the Strength Tarot so desperately that I need to sell this Hermit um, so that I can get another Strength card with the Fool that's coming up. Okay, but it's not just one Fool. Uh, it's after this we'll see another Fool, which means, you know, in the big money run, we could go Hermit, Fool gives us a second Hermit, Fool gives us a third Hermit, and that's, we're missing out here on, uh, you know, by turning these Fools into Strength, we're missing out on 40 additional dollars, which, you know, that could be extra shop rerolls, and that could be extra, you know, planet cards that we need to buy, uh, but we need the Strength cards so bad. All right, in this shot, because we used all our fools to make strength cards instead of hermit cards, uh, we're hurting a little bit on cash. We'll make up for it later, but we were a little bit low right now. So, you know, as we go through the shop, you know, nothing too crazy. We don't have a whole lot that we can do here. Um, but we do get uh, another one of these priestess cards. And so we're going to play this same sort of game of we'll use the priestess to make some tarot or we'll make some planet cards. Uh, we'll re-roll the shop and then now with Saturn here, Neptune, Jupiter here, this Celestial Pack will not contain any of those three and instead it'll give us uh, the Pluto that we need. which is lucky because now here another fool card which could have been a fourth hermit tarot instead of being strength now is going to give us uh, an extra pluto card you know as much as we need the strength cards we also need the uh, pluto cards and so we can use fool both to make a strength card sometimes and also to make us pluto cards but i happen to know uh, there is not a fool coming up I think for the entire rest of the run, uh, which means, well, if there's no fools coming up, then all of that strategy is thrown out. Uh, we can go ahead, play when we see strength, play it. When we see hermits, play it. When we get a Pluto card, no uh, sense saving it up. But we do get naturally here, we get a strength. That's going to upgrade us to twos. And then with one more pair there, okay, now threes.
All right, so sort of the same game uh, that we were doing with the shop, where if you're holding on to a card, the shop will not generate that card. It'll just skip the card in the queue. Um, and so because we were able to pick up the crystal ball voucher, uh, I can hold one tarot card while eight ball generates two tarot cards. And so we've been holding on to this tower. Uh, we could have been holding on to different things, but we've been holding on to this tower specifically because there are a couple tower cards that show up in a row. And so uh, if I'm holding on to this one, then that'll skip a tower card. It'll skip another tower card. It'll skip two times in the queue. Um, and then as, you know, different tarot cards show up being repeated, we'll switch this tower card out and then hold something else instead. All right, this next hand, this pair of eights is going to give us uh, a death card. And so this is why it was so important to use those fool cards earlier to get the strength card earlier. You know, we will get strength eventually. We will be able to upgrade our cards eventually, but a benefit to doing it earlier is since I've already achieved, now I have my gold seal threes, now whatever death cards that show up in the rest of the run, I can use uh, that to turn cards into these threes. Because like I said, at the end, we need to have the seal three in our starting hand of 10 cards. And so we want to increase the chances of that happening as much as possible by making as many copies as possible. Also, I'm going to switch from holding onto this tower card to holding onto this mercury card now. Uh, again, you know, as we generate additional planets, um, I'm holding onto this one so that uh, there will be a mercury card that gets skipped. All right, strength turning our twos into threes. This is as backup. Um, you know, if we get to the end and we don't immediately have the uh, gold seal in our starting hand, any extra threes, we can still play normal threes as a way of just cycling through our deck and then getting uh, to what we want. And then the next pair of eights here reveals uh, yet another death card. Okay, so we're already up to, now we've got four gold seals and three of them are gold, you know, so we get a little bit extra money there. All right, holding this mercury card uh, when we use the priestess gives us a skip. There's a mercury card. Um, I think it's it goes... Uranus first, then Mercury, then Mars. So Mercury gets skipped. Um, and then now we're going to switch over to holding the Mars instead. All right, in the shop, we've got very much more the same stuff. So we're gonna use 11 total rerolls here. Um, we're gonna get through the uh, tarot cards first. And so, you know, there's a, a temperance card that I want and there's other cards that I don't want. So by rerolling uh, to get a few of those tarot cards in the shop, then now the Arcana pack gives us whatever the next, next card is. Um, which it gives us the temperance that we want. And there we go, yet another gold seal three. Um, from doing the big money run, I already know what order all of the tarot cards are going to be. So I already know, uh, you know, when does the strength cards happen? When do the Fool cards happen, when do the death card happen? Um, and then so, you know, sort of maneuvering around trying to get the strength cards early enough in order to get the gold seals so that I could actually use the death card on them. Uh, a couple of polychrome jokers in the shop. And then now, okay, we've got Jupiter and Mars. 
both being skipped, able to pick up a Pluto here. Skipped ahead just a minute. Uh, maybe I should skip more than that. Yeah, I want to get here at the end of the round. Something kind of interesting happens. So I just use a temperance card a couple hands back, and I get this emperor card. And you know, normally, okay, we use the Emperor and then we spawn in more tarot cards so that we can dig through uh, the set here. But what I wanted was, I knew that there's this Fool coming up, and what I want is I want the Fool instead of hitting the Emperor, because if I use Emperor and I spawn in a Fool, then the Fool will remember that I played an Emperor. What I want to do is hold the Emperor um, so that I can dig through and get the Fool and use the Fool first to make the temperance before playing the emperor. And then this emperor actually gives me another fool card. And so, you know, if we use the temperance there before the emperor, again, we're gonna have this problem with the fool. Uh, so we hold the temperance, play the emperor, get the fool, and then now after we can play the temperance if I want to get another one with the fool. Except uh, this priestess gives us a Pluto card, which means, okay, instead of using this fool to make this $40 temperance here, $45 temperance, um, I'm going to use this fool to make a Pluto card instead because that's worth $40 to me how desperately we need these Pluto cards. Sorry, it's the next priestess. There we go. And so that's Pluto number 10 gives us level 11. And then this fool is gonna give us Pluto number 11 gives us level 12 high card. Okay, so we've got all of the Pluto cards that we need. We've got our gold seal threes. We've got our foil joker. The only missing piece now is we need the constellation joker. Which we'll able to, we're able to get very easily in the next shop. So here it is. A uh, couple re-rolls. There's the constellation. Uh, we no longer need any more money. Uh, we've got $200, uh, that's plenty. So we can go ahead and sell the egg. And now the only thing left to do, we do need to get the con constellation to a certain number. We need to get uh, times 1.6, which means I need exactly six planet cards. Any six planet cards, except for I'm not allowed to use any more Pluto cards. And so easiest way to do that, okay, we'll pick up one from the Celestial Pack. Uh, we'll go through and just try to find them in the shop. And then that's it. That is uh, 1.6 times on our constellation. Everything is set up. Uh, the last piece here, you know, it's not super necessary, but uh, you know, just 
to thin the deck a little bit more, we'll use the last hanged man here. And now what you're seeing is just the victory lap here. Um, so we've got our three when we play it, that's exactly 45, 46. And so we'll play it uh, for this round, you know, something like seven times. And we don't need anything else from the last shop. Make sure to turn off the debuff by selling a joker. We don't need the eight ball anymore. Um, and then here we go. Our high card, 4,500 points. That will be enough to get us 50,000. best hand of 4,500. This is the minimum possible best hand that you can have. 